Today with Godot, we're going to continue our tutorials and we're going to make a little circular chart here. For example, here uh, we are going to just have a value and a circle chart and it will change color as the value changes. And we're going to set up, we need to have some sort of value to measure, so I'm going to measure how much I move my finger up and down the screen, although in future tutorials we're actually going to use some real numbers. Uh, but I can scroll my, slide my finger up and down, drag it up and down, and it changes the value uh, both in the number, the chart, and the color. Uh, and again, you can do this will run on all operating systems. I'm, I'm using my daughter's uh, Amazon tablet, which I currently have taken apart because a couple days ago she thought she would um, wash it in the sink and <laughs> it got some water in it. Um, but it's dried out now and I just haven't put the case back on. But let's go ahead. This shouldn't take too long. We're going to go through it real quick, so pay attention. As always with my projects, you can find all the code and resources up on GitLab. So if you go to gitlab.com forward slash mailx1000 forward slash circle chart, or check out the link in the description of this video, you'll find this whole project. You can download it and give it a try. Um, but if you just want to follow along, you can also grab the assets from there. I am going to show you how to quickly, there's two things we need to create, uh, and I'll show you how to create those, but we'll also use the ones that I've already created just to for ease. Uh, so we're going to go over to Godot here. So I have a new project here, and I'm going to bring over the project that I've already created with the assets. So I'm going to grab, I have two images of circles, one's just slightly smaller than the other, uh, a font and a new icon to replace Godot icon. I'm going to drag those over. I'm just dropping them right in my main project folder. Uh, normally you'd want to put things into their own separate folders to keep things organized, but this is such a small project, I'm just going to go ahead and throw them in the main directory. Next, again, I'm just going to quickly show you how I created these circles. So again, there's two circles and uh, one's just slightly smaller than the other. So I'm in GIMP here. I'm going to say uh, Control N for new. I'm going to create a square image. I'm going to go 50 or 512 by 512. I don't remember what size I actually used in this project. I think it made it too big. We are using a PNG. We're not using SVGs or anything like that for this particular project. Uh, so you just want to make it big enough that it doesn't look pixelated small enough that it isn't huge because it doesn't need to be huge. Uh, and 512 by 512 is probably bigger than needed. Uh, you go under advanced, you're going to make fill transparency. Okay, so we're going to click OK. So we have this blank image. I'm going to hit Control A to select all. So the whole box is selected. I'm going to say shrink. And I'm going to put in a number here. I'm going to go, um, I don't know, 48, I think. So I have a, a square here. I'm going to turn that into a circle. I'm going to say select and I'm going to go rounded rectangle. I'm going to put this all the way up to 100%. Okay, and that gives us a circle. Uh, but I don't just want a circle. I want a you know circle with the hole cut out, like a donut. So I'm now going to go to border select. So select border and 32 pixels sounds good for this particular size image. And now I'm going to fill this in with white. So put white, click fill bucket, and fill that in. And like I said, we're going to do two images. I saved them as two images. I think I named them circle and circle underscore one. You don't have to do that. You, can, you only need one, but I like a slight border around my progress bar as it moves. So just to show you this, I'm going to um, hide that layer, create a new blank layer. And with what we already have selected, I'm going to say select. I'm just going to shrink it. I'm going to shrink it by, I don't know, four pixels. On, so we shrunk it by four pixels. I'll fill that in in black just so you can see the difference. So you can see I have a white border around the black. So we're going to be whatever color. Now we're going to export them both as white circles because then in Godot we can tint them whatever color we want. And in this particular example we're going to have it change color as the percentage changes. So I just wanted to show you quickly how I personally made circles but you can use whatever program you'd like. Or you can just grab the ones from my project. We're going to use a user interface control here. I'm going to rename it chart, whoops, chart, and I'm going to add two children. First one's going to be a progress bar, but not just a regular progress bar, a texture progress bar. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go with that selected, we're going to go down to texture, and we're going to uh, put sprites, our PNGs, in under and progress. So the smaller circle, I'm sorry, the larger circle goes in under, and the larger one, or, saying that backwards, the larger one goes in under, the smaller one goes in progress. To see the difference, I'm going to create, I'm going to take the under one. I like to make it kind of an aw, a grayish color. And the progress one, in this particular case, we're going to make gray, but we're going to, ch or red, we're going to change that in our code. You don't see the red one yet because we haven't given a percentage. Percentage or value is at zero now. I'm going to give it 25, although again, we're going to change that in code. You can see it filling from the left here. That's not what we want. Again, with that selected, the texture progress, we're going to go up here to fill mode and we're going to say clockwise. Whoop, like that. 
It's also larger than our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to Rect and I'm going to change the scale. I think I did 0.4 by 0.4, so a little less than half its size. Again, that depends on how big you make your sprite. And there we go. Next, I'm going to add in a label. So I'm going to go chart, add child, and I'm going to say label. And I'm going to put 25% in there just so you can have some text in there. It's rather small now, so with that still selected, we're going to go down to custom font. We're going to click here where it says empty and choose dynamic font. Click it again, and that gives us this drop down. We're going to go font, empty, and we're going to load in the font, whatever font you want, but I, again, providing one with my project. There it is, and we're going to change the size. So under settings, we'll make this 64. You can make it whatever size you would like. I'm also going to go here, I'm going to say full rec. So it's full like that. And I'm going to come back up here and for a line, I'm going to say center and V align for vertical, we're going to go center. So now it's in the center of our project. I'm going to come down here again and you can leave it like that, but I also like to put a border around my words. So I'm going to choose black for the outline and I'm going to go one or two pixels, whatever you think looks best. I'm going to click click control S to save this. I'll just save it as chart scene and I'll hit F5 and it will ask me to pick my default scene, which will be this one. And there we go. That's what we have so far. Let me go ahead and I'm going to grab our texture process here. Oops. Let's go ahead. I moved that by accident. Control Z to undo. I'm going to lock that. So with the label selected, I'm going to choose this little lock tool. And so now I can't accidentally, oh, I, you know, I locked the right thing. I was moving the chart there. I'm going to move my circle here. I'm just going to eyeball it for right now to fit around my wording. Let's hit F5 and see it's off center. And that's because of where its anchor is. What I want to do is I want to move its anchor to the center here. And there we go. Now I'll hit F5 and it's right there. Perfect. That's just what we want. Now we're ready to start coding. I'm going to right click on chart here. I'm going to say attach script. And again, I'm just going to call it chart.gd for Godot script. And to make things simple, I am going to uh, copy and paste some code into here, but I'll explain everything as we go. I'm going to erase everything except for that extends control. And we're going to create a couple of variables here. Uh, click equal to false. That's going to verify when I click, that's going to go true. When I release the mouse or touch screen, it's going to go false. Start is going to be the start position when you click. So it's going to get the position of our click and put it in start. And then we'll be able to calculate how much we move based on that. And the value, uh, I have it set as a float here, depending on your project, you may want to float. We're going to change this to an integer just by deleting that dot zero. Um, but that's going to be the value that's returned as we move our finger up and down the screen. Next, we're going to do some on raise. What is on ready? So we're going to be getting uh, both our label and our circle here, and we're going to name them label and circle so they're easier to call. Uh, so we're going to get those nodes. And to get them, we have to wait for everything to load. So we're going to say on ready. Uh, but there's still global variables within this object, so we can call them anywhere inside this script. Next, we're going to have a ready function that's going to run once, once everything is ready. And we're going to say label, we're going to say take the value, which is currently an integer, change it to a string and put the percent sign on the end. In this particular case, we're going percent. In future tutorials, we'll be using other um, uh, things such as uh, degrees, Fahrenheit, because we're going to do something with a temperature sensor at some point. We also have a script for updating the circle. So when the script loads, it's going to get the current value. It's going to update our label, and then it's also going to update the circle. So for updating the circle, we have a function here. If we're just going to give it the value, we don't need a whole function, but we're going to be changing the color too. So real quick, we're going to give it this function. Um, these, but this, this line right here is just saying, okay, take our circle, our chart. So our chart here, right? And we're going to change the value right there, right? Um, and then we're also going to calculate based on that value what color it is. I'll talk more about this once we have it up and running. Uh, but right now I should be able to hit F5 and everything still looks the same except for now we have a green color. And again, I'll explain that more once we get it working. So next we also want to be able to get the value. So it's going to update the value. I'm going to come down here and say, okay, get value. We're going to pass it a position. We're going to get our value. We're going to get the start position, which is currently zero. And we're going to subtract 
that position, which is going to be on the y-axis, so up and down in our case, and get a number from that. And that number is kind of large, so based on the screen resolution, we do that, we move our finger a little bit, it's going to jump all the way to 100% pretty quick. So to make it move a little bit slower, I'm multiplying it by 0.2, or basically getting 20% of that number. You can tweak this number right here. If you want it to move slower, you can do 0.1 or 0.05. I find 2 to be pretty good for most screen sizes. Now we're also saying if that value is ever over 100, set it to 100. If it's ever under zero, set it to zero. That way we never go beyond 100 or below zero. In our particular case, you may want to in your case. Again, if you're working with temperatures, you might want to go below zero. Once we do all that, now we're going to take our start position and reset it to our current position. And then we're going to take that value, we're going to turn it into an integer, uh, which we have it as an integer here, but if we had it as a float and we want to convert it to an integer, that's what that's doing right here. If you want it to be a float, meaning a decimal number, you wouldn't wrap it in this. And we're also going to round the value. Uh, we do this because if it's smaller than one, you're going to always get zero, so we want to round if it's more than at least a half of uh, a number. Then we're going to return that value, which we, we don't actually use in this script, but is useful in future um, endeavors. We are almost done. All we have to do is get our user input. So I'm going to copy that, I'm going to paste it. I usually like to have that up pretty close to the top. So this is saying anytime there's any type of input, get that event. Okay, we're going to check if that event is a mouse button press, also including touch screens. So if your finger is down on the screen or your mouse is clicked, what next? Or actually, I'm sorry, if it's a button, whether it's your, your finger touching the screen or letting go of the screen or clicking a button or letting go of a button, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to check, is it being pressed? or is it being released? So we're saying is it pressed or the, the um, exclamation mark here means not pressed. Okay, when we press, we're gonna take our start number and set it equal to the position of your mouse cursor on the Y axis, which is up and down. And we're also gonna set click true. If you ever let go, we're gonna set click set to false. So that's just detecting, are we pressing or are we letting go? If we are pressing, then reset our start value, okay? Now we're gonna say, okay, if that event is now moving, if you're moving the mouse cursor or moving your finger on a touch screen and the mouse is being clicked, so we need that. If we didn't have that, anytime we move our mouse on the screen, like I'm doing right now, even if I'm not clicking, it would start changing the value. We only want to do when we're clicking. So that's what we're doing right there, okay? Uh, so we're checking that and then we're gonna say, okay, get the value. That's our function down here. Again, we're passing in a position, but not an X, Y coordinate, just the Y, okay? We're gonna take that and then we're going to say update our label. So our get value here, that's going to update our global variable of value. And so we're going to update our label and then we're going to update our circle. So again, our circle here is going to get the global variable value, value and uh, set the value of our circle to that. So I'll explain the color stuff in a second, but let's go ahead and hit F5 to run our code. And here I can click and I can move up. And it's not based on where I click, like it's not that I click up here and the number jumps high or click down here, it jumps low. It's calculating the difference from where I started to where I ended and it's looping through that every time we move the mouse. Now again, we're going from green to red, which is a nice little transition. Again, you can go other ways because maybe you want when it gets low, it's turn red. If it's getting high, you might want it to turn red, whichever is like the, oh no, something bad's about to happen. So let's go ahead and quickly look at that. I'm going to explain this as best I can without getting too complicated. We're using a range lerp. So what is a lerp? A lerp is similar to a tween. If you do, tween basically calculates, you give it two values and it transitions from one to another. It's kind of what this is doing. A lerp does that and range lerp is converting a certain set of numbers to another set of numbers. So where we want to work with, when you're working with color, we have RGB. So here we have, ignore these two lines for a moment. We're going to say color, we're going to tint our process bar or progress bar. And we're going to give it a value of RGB, red, green, and blue. So if I hit set green and blue to zero and uh, the first one to one, because we're going from zero to one in this, I'm going to hit F5. You see our progress bar is red, no matter what size it is. If I go back in there and I change red to zero and green to one, now our bar will be green, no matter what we want. If I was to set green to 0.5, it's going to be green, but a, a darker shade of green. 
And if I do one and one, we're going to get red and green together, and red and green together equals yellow. Okay, this is color 101. And if we make them all equal to one, we're going to get white, because white is the presence of all colors. And if we set them all to zero, we're going to get the absence of color, which is darkness, right? Because you don't have any light, we're going to get black. So we can set the colors that way, or over in the thing here. Um, but if we were to go back and change these, I'm undoing a lot where I could just type it. There we go. I'm saying, OK, set red and green. Blue is always going to be 0 in this case, but you, if you want to use blue, you can add in a value for that. So we're going to be red or green. Where are the values for red and green? So we're going to take our value, so which is going to be anyone for, or from 0 to 100. And that's what we're saying here. It's a, it's a value, and it's going to be from 0 to 100. We'll convert that from either 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. We go 1 to 0 because we want when our value is 0, we want green to be at its fullest. When it's at 100, we want it to be at its least. For red, we're going to do the other. If, if our value is 0, it's going to be 0. If it's 100, it's going to be 1. If it's 50, it's going to be 0.1. So it's going to do that, and then it's going to mix those colors together right here. So that is it. We are done with our project, except for one or two tweaks. Um, so we're done with the project. We want to now make sure it displays on all uh, screens properly. So let's go up to project settings. We'll go down to display, somewhere in here, display window. And down here in orientation, do we want it to always be landscape? Do we always want it to be portrait? Reverse, uh, but we can also use sensors. So if you're using this on a phone, if you turn the phone, do you want it to rotate? So you do what best for your project. I'm going to say portrait for me. So now on my phone or tablet, this program will always work in portrait mode. If you turn the screen sideways, it's not going to rotate. Maybe what you want for your project may not. It's up to your project. On a desktop computer, it's going to look the same regardless. So there we go. And again, we can do this. And now, you know, again, you can tweak this to however you want it to look. One other thing you might want to do is uh, when I hit F5 here and the game starts, or the program starts, you'll see it gives the Godot Game Engine logo right there. If you don't want that, you can make your own. We're going to go under Project Settings, and then uh, it's under Applications Boot Splash, and we can choose a program here, or I'm sorry, an image here. You have a few options here, and I'm just going to choose my icon, which is kind of low resolution for this, and a little confusing that loads up with a screen that says 25%. But just to show you, you can put whatever image you want in there. I believe it has to be a PNG. Hit a 5 and now it shows that when it's loading. But you would change that to whatever icon you want. I almost forgot to show you. Just uh, let's go up to project. Uh, we'll export. We'll add in Android. We will make sure we change our unique name to whatever your unique name is. Uh, my website is filmsbychris.com, so I'm going to do com.filmsbychris because that seems to be the standard for doing these things, even though it just seems very weird to me. Um, and then that's all we have to do if you have a global key set up. If not, you're going to have to set uh, the debug key here, which there's one uh, in my project on GitLab if you want to grab that. Uh, but we should be good now that we've created that little export. We should be able to go up to our Android icon. I've got uh, that uh, Amazon Fire tablet plugged into the computer. I have ADB and everything set up that I showed up showed how to do in previous videos. And it is now packaging it for as an APK. It's pushing it to the device. And here we go. We've got our little progress circle chart bar thing. Uh, again, we're going to use this in future videos. Um, I've got... Uh, temperature sensors around the house. And we're going to grab the temperature from them and give you a little readout. We'll also look at uh, you know other numbers that I collect on data around my house and display it in an app that runs on your desktop, laptop, phone, tablet, web browser, whatever. So thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a website. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.